Hey, our next presentation is the Noel Johnson Courage Award. The award is named after the former Midwestern State basketball coach, Noel Johnson, who died following a 14-month battle with ovarian cancer. This year's story of courage takes us to Burke Burnett. Brad Boyd liked to win. Burke Burnett wanted to win. So Boyd was hired as head football coach in 2021. His desire to win evident on Friday nights. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. This story dates back to the year 2000. Boyd, a coach at Garland High School, having a conversation with an athletic trainer. We were visiting one night and I was like, I gotta go. Uh, I have a tea time at Indian Creek Golf Course the next day at 9 o'clock, and he showed up at the golf course and played golf. And we hit it off after that, and the rest is history. Over the course of 18 holes, Brad Boyd won Leslie's heart. The courtship continued, and a couple of years later, Brad had an opportunity, an opportunity which would take him more than 300 miles away from the woman he loved. It wasn't until he, he had gone to interview at Bandera for a job, and we were not engaged or anything. And I was like, and he was like, do you want to go to Bandera? And I was like, nope, not going anywhere. I'm not married. I'm not doing that, you know? And so he turned the job down. A short time later, in 2004, Brad and Leslie were married, and she soon found out what it was truly like to be a coach's wife. And I always told him, every time it was time for me to spring clean, we just packed and moved. From Irving, to Crandall, to Odessa, to Hillsboro, where in 2009, Brad, now the father of two, needed to go under the knife. 10 years earlier in 1999 at Hardin-Simmons, Boyd, a quarterback, set a school record which still stands today with 4,133 yards of total offense. A routine physical that year, leading to the revelation Boyd had a kidney disorder known as Berger's disease. He had won the battle for 10 years, but when his kidney function fell below 20%, his brother proved to be the perfect match for a transplant. With a new healthy kidney, Brad took a job at Colleyville Heritage. Then it was off to Justin Northwest for three seasons and then to Waco Midway for five years. And then with his kids entering high school, another move, landing in Texoma at Burke Burnett High School in 2021. They both loved everything. They wanted to be involved in everything, and that's hard to do at a big school. So it was our passion. Brad and I both played everything and did everything and was involved in everything in school, and we thought if that's what our kids want to do, then let's do it. So that's when we started interviewing for jobs, and then this was the perfect place. It's also the place where Brad's fight with cancer began. You see, people with kidney disease, especially those who've had a transplant, are at a higher risk of developing cancer. The Boyds knew this, but Brad never showed fear. Remember, he likes to win. It started growing. He ended up having his whole ear move, removed in December 2021. And then, um, and they thought they had it all then. And then, Sure enough, it came back that March of 2022. It was just another challenge that we do. Brad was the most optimistic person. Like, it's this is another challenge. It's what we do. We've always had good luck. He believed invincible. He wanted to put everything off, I always say, well, after football season. But his body wouldn't allow that to happen. Doctors just had to work around his Friday nights. He had games to win, young men to coach, and his own children to love and parent. All the getting cut out every few months with the cancer like all over i just thought oh he's on the football field every day like that's normal it's a normal thing it's a monthly thing we do or whatever and it, like i never saw it as a sick thing i feel like whenever he started when i started realizing it, it affected him out on the field and like how he coached and like how he had to ride a golf cart around and how he couldn't whenever he couldn't speak as well that's when i was really like realizing like this is a lot more serious than i could ever thought his biggest struggle originally was physical but we'd go to md anderson and they would say have you had any falls and every time he would say does it, do, does it look like i fall like why do they keep asking me this question you know and then 
the first time he fell at our house, he goes, well, I see why they, I thought, my brain said do this, but my body didn't do it quite like I thought it was going to, and I fell. And now it makes sense now why they keep asking me that. Even after the chemo started, I didn't fear yet. I knew that he could just get through it, and it was no big deal. I really didn't start to fear anything until the weakness came. One time it was just me and him at home, and since he had no voice, and you know, I just hear clapping. And I knew, I was like, uh-oh, and he's like banging on stuff and because he can't yell out for help, and that was hard to see. He fell in the cancer center, threw his Dr. Pepper everywhere, and he, you know, he would get so mad because he would be, you know, he felt he was still an athlete. And so when things like that happened, he would get so frustrated. Frustrated, but never defeated. He would tell me he's okay, and I'd just try to believe it, and I'd try to move on with my day-to-day -day life because that's what he wanted me to do. Um, he wanted me to go and do all the things and hang out with friends and not stay home worrying about him. And so I listened to him and I went out and I lived my life. I played, we went so far in softball last year and I, he got to watch it all. He got to support me through it all. Even if he couldn't make all the games when he was in the hospital, he was watching the game changers and the live games on Facebook. And that I liked knowing that he was still there watching me, even if he couldn't make it, even if he was in the hospital with fighting whatever he was fighting at the time. Growing up, I knew, I mean, ball bowling for him at Midway and just Northwest and all that, I thought, I mean, it was, I couldn't wait for the day to be able to play for him when he was coaching me. And I, I was so happy and so blessed to be able to, um, you know, be on the field with him. Even if he was in a golf cart or if he was doing anything in the press box, no matter what, I was, I was happy with being there. I thought it was amazing to spend that last year of him coaching with, with me on the field. November 10th, 2023. Burke Burnett travels to Childress for a first round playoff game. From his hospital bed, Brad got to watch his son throw one last touchdown pass. 22 days later, on December 2nd, 2023, Brad Boyd took his final breath. Brad was the most optimistic person. He believed, I mean, literally, the, the day before he passed, he still believed that he was in it to win it, like, the entire time. It was very impressive how he didn't let anyone know that he was struggling early, honestly. He just kind of kept his mouth shut. He didn't want anyone knowing he was sick. And if I'd tell someone, you'd get mad at me. <laughs> but I wanted people to know, like, this isn't him. While some may say Brad Boyd lost his battle with cancer, others would say he won, like the Bulldogs did under the Friday Night Lights, like Burke Burnett did when hiring him. Because his legacy lives on through Leslie, Brooke, and Brody. Ready or not, we're doing it. And countless other young men and women who Brad Boyd coached. Please welcome to the stage, Leslie, Brooke, and Brody Boyd. Brooke, you stood closest to me, so that means you get to talk first. If everybody in here takes one thing tonight about your dad, what do you want them to know? Um, that he was the best dad that I could ever ask for. Um, I loved our constant jokes and all the, I don't know, all the humor that he had and the personality and the way that he, I just wish that everyone was able to experience that. Us. Leslie, step over here, and, and he spent his life teaching people. What did you learn from him? Uh, to fight. I mean, he fought till the very end. Like, you got to see he was at practices with his mask on or still trying to talk to k kids and coaching until the end. And he, like I said, he believed that he was going to beat this until he took his last breath. He still believed. And... Cancer sucks, and you just gotta battle. Brody, that last touchdown pass, you know he got to see. What does, what does that pass mean to you? 
um, means a lot. Uh, knowing I got hurt that season and knowing he was struggling through cancer and stuff, uh, when I finally got to play in that last playoff game when I was healed and knowing he was in the hospital, finally got that last drive, threw that touchdown, knew he was at least watching from the hospital, and just it's going to live with me forever, knowing he saw that. To the Boyd family, thank you. <laughs> You're making me tear up. Um, thank you for entrusting me with this story to share with all these people here tonight. You did a great thank, job. Thank you.